Okay, so this is fast turning into a case of me reviewing things as I try to grow my YouTube channel a bit. So perhaps this might be of use to some people who are trying to set up their own channels and they're just trying to consider what kind of gear they should be buying. Now, a lot of people will tell you that when it comes to YouTube, don't go buying a lot of expensive equipment, just use the bare basics of what you have already. Chances are you've got your phone, you've got your tablet, you've probably uh, got something like a laptop, something that's already got its own built-in webcam, for example, uh, and of course its own microphone. Now at the moment, I am using my new Rode Pro microphone. It's plugged in and turned on in my camera right now. I've got a new lighting rig that I've basically put underneath the camera right here. So I've got sound up here, I've got light here, I've got vision here, obviously. And that's just things I've bought slowly but surely over the course of about a, a year and a half of doing YouTube. Didn't need to, uh, to buy the stuff initially because I didn't have any big views, didn't have a big number of subscribers. I still don't. As of this point in time, I've got roughly 11,000 views and about 30 subscribers and a very, very low average uh, view count. But you never know, they do say that buying new equipment, improving your sound quality, improving your light quality will actually help. And this is something that could help me in other cases. This, as you can probably guess from the signage, is from Amazon Premium, or Premium, or however you want to pronounce it. Unlimited fast delivery. And it's just a box. And there's not much really to tell you that it's got stampage, recycling things, a great big E4 here, I've got no idea what that's for, and not much else I thought from somebody else that I'll probably just have to censor in a little while because that's my address and so on, and I didn't think to do that beforehand. So, here we are with the industrial screwdriver, the bigger, heavier screwdriver that I occasionally forget to bring on and end up either using a tiny little screwdriver that I normally use, or just my bare hands. Nice and secure. Unlike some other equipment that I bought, like the Rode Pro microphone, which the box I've been fiddled with, this one hasn't been. I can only saw when somebody's unboxing it the first time, genuinely for the first time, because none of the contents are pre cut. That really would have felt hard. Cool. Grind to destroy. Art. The art of unboxing. Great boss on it. Just empty stuff. I think I just bashed the uh, microphone there. Sorry. Oops. I think I've just lost something. No, no, everything's okay. Alright, I don't know what happened there, but I just wound up looking at the wrong part of the camera and thought everything had turned off. But no, it is actually still recording. Right. What have I got here then? What have I got here? What could possibly be here? We've got a ball code, an old load of white packaging, and a bit excessive packaging, so it's obviously bigger than it should be. Can you guess what it is? And you must be a genius. Oh, you've looked at the title of the video, haven't you? Sneaky clever buggers. I thought that would hold. Don't want me to pull this out, but I didn't, and here we go. Alright, as you can see, I have ordered myself a beautiful blonde woman with headphones on her ears and a sweatband. No, I haven't. I've obviously bought myself a microphone. No, I haven't. I've bought myself a microphone recording stand. A professional, rather than amateur. So that must mean I'm getting paid for this. No, I'm an amateur. I don't monetize my videos. It's just that this is the fancy bit of the... Uh, Advertising. And it's also actually quite a cheap one. I think this was uh, roughly about five pounds at the time. Hmm, that's interesting. If this is to be believed, I know for a fact from the description when I got this off Amazon, it does come with this little attachment here to hold it onto your desk. I'm not sure if it's actually got that standard. I don't think it mentioned anything about having that little uh, mouth guard thing, thingy. What you call it? Thingy bob. Uh, the stuff that you cover over your microphone to sort of protect it from spit and stuff like that and too much blowback and stuff. I'm doing this with my hand of course, so oof, that really probably doesn't make any difference. No, I'm pretty sure the, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure the, 
the channel said it didn't actually have anything like that, so that'll be a bonus if it did. Pop guard, is that what it's called? Yeah, I think it's called a pop guard. Right, well, I'll have to look that up for something. That'll be a pleasant surprise if it is in there, because I genuinely wasn't expecting that. Uh, hmm. Here we go, yes, it's a bit extra. Let's the extra pieces, and so far, no, there's absolutely nothing in there. At all, that looks like any kind of pop guard. So, the box is just lying a bit. But that looks like most of the equipment, other than the pop guard. Got to set them in the so let's just see what we've got. The main stand, this adapter, and this thing here that's screwed into the table. Right. So this looks like some pretty heavy duty equipment. Completely incompatible with the microphone I'm using at the moment. Nice little bit of spring material there. Hmm, yes, that looks like it's going to be quite good. And decent enough fair uh, position here, so that's presumably goes on like that. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to stop to uh, read the answer. Oh, no, hang on a second. Hmm, yeah, I think that goes in there like that, possibly. Possibly, I'm not entirely sure. And this is obviously meant for the microphone stand itself. Uh, for the actual microphone to go into. But unfortunately, there's absolutely nothing as far as instructions go. Which is a bit of a shame. And that does actually end up making them look like a bit of a liar. And even then, look at that. That is clearly not the same piece. See what I mean? How does that and that? bear more than a passing resemblance to each other. Okay, those bits obviously do. They are obviously clearly the same piece. Um, does this even look anything like what we get there? Hmm. Let's just hold it in place a bit. Yeah, I've got very sincere doubts as to how accurate this all is. Is this actually... Oh, yes, hang on, now I see what they've done. Now I see what they've done. Okay, positioning everything like this, but they've flipped the image over. They're sneaky, devious buggers. Yeah. Oh, they've completely rebuilt it. Yeah. See that? You've got your adjusting nut there, which isn't there, but it's actually on the other side. And then you've got no adjusting nut here, and no adjusting nut there. But you do get an adjustment there. I am thoroughly confused. What the hell is going on here? The only thing that really has me convinced that it's otherwise what it's supposed to be is that all the wires seem to be where they're supposed to be and all the springs seem to be where they're supposed to be. Yeah, I'm a bit bewildered by this. I know it's cheap and everything, but uh, at the same time, I do kind of expect everything to look like what it looks like on the box. That clearly isn't. Okay, so I'm just going to take a closer look at my new microphone stand. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I've got my main microphone, my Rode Pro, which I'm rather happy with, actually pl uh, plugged in here. This is just me literally messing around a little bit, just seeing what you can get away with. As you can see, it's just literally, I put the screw thread in there, I've just literally held it in place like that. It's not going to go anywhere or do anything. It's not even plugged into anything right now. But this is just for testing purposes, just see if it actually works in that regard. And as you can see, I've got everything all hooked up quite nicely. And it does seem quite nice and stable in general. You can swing it around a bit quite freely. Don't you just love it when somebody does a shot of other locations or showing you a bit more of their location, of their abode, than you might normally get uh, to see. Um, and as you can see, this does swing around quite well. You can t sort of tighten it up a bit with this. You can even lock it in place because there's a hole in here. And here's one of the first things I've noticed. The quality of the metalwork really, well, 
Let's just see if we can find it again. There we go. As you can see, the metal work, if I just move into the light, yeah, it's split a little bit because perhaps I've been a little too forceful with the screw thread and just held it in place a little too much, but it, the quality of the metal, it doesn't hold up to too much pressure on this thing, so be careful with that. Um, other things I have noticed is in general, like around here, Okay, the paintwork, unfortunately, I can tell you what, let's just move it around that into the light, it'll probably be better. I can't really make out in the viewfinder myself whether or not it can see this, but that's a bit better. If I can see this in the viewfinder now, you can see that on your monitors or TVs or your, possibly your phones as well if you, that's what you're doing. But you can see right here, the paint has sort of coming off. It wasn't like that when I started using it. And there's a bit more similar damage along that, those lines. I'm not really seeing any other damage like that anywhere else. Okay, everything else just seems to be okay. But that's just a bit on the disappointing side. That's uh, it's a bit of a worry. I've literally just had it a few minutes, and the paint job is already wearing f rather thin in some places. Ah. Uh, other things I'm just a little suspicious of. I've gone and looked at a few of the reviews here, and more, in most cases the packaging is more or less identical. In some cases you've got a different model over there, but for the majority of the cases it's always the same material uh, provided here. Except in some cases you've got a great big uh, logo here that seems to be completely absent. It's not on any part of the packaging at all. Um, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. That makes me wonder if this is some sort of excess stock that they're getting rid of. Also, some videos, admittedly, they might be going after a different model that's got, say, the shock absorb and stuff like that. And maybe different pieces compared to that and this. Because, look, after all, when you look here, you don't get the spit guard thing. You don't get that particular model of grip. Clamp. Clamp. Yes, that's the word. Clamp. You do get that. But others that I've seen, it's exactly the same basic unit. Um, but certain parts are just slightly different. But that brings me on to the idea of the price. Some of them, some of the videos, yeah, I mean, it'll be a couple of years old now. They say the price was over 100 US dollars. I got this for about 10 pounds on Amazon. So either this particular item is getting discontinued and they're getting rid of the stock or they're just having a great big sale couldn't really tell you one way or the other I just don't know uh, but in general oops as long as you've got it secure then it is actually quite secure in its own right uh, we've got a good range of posability here so not that you actually need to have it that high up but uh, there you go I'm not entirely sure what this particular uh, screw here is for, it just doesn't seem to really have any effect, it doesn't seem to affect anything that you do, it doesn't seem to actually lock anything in place, it just seems to be there to do something. This one on the other hand, it does have an effect because if you turn it like this, the whole unit moves down. It's not supposed to do that, it's just supposed to help lock it in place a bit more so obviously if you're doing it one handed like I am, it's a bit difficult, but there you go. It's all floppy now, it's all flaccid. Don't worry, we can stiffen that up for you. <clears throat> and we'll just have to leave it like that a bit. But we can then push it like that a bit, and I'll just move that around like that. This bit here does move around quite well. In general, it's a bit on the stiff side. Go for, go for. Uh, but it does get sort of around to give you some freedom of movement. If you try to turn it the other way around, then the screw thread sort of starts undoing. And that brings me on to the next bit. Uh, I think I've knocked it off. But down here there was the plastic... Ah, there we are. There was the plastic uh, attachment that you get there. And if you're wondering what all this uh, rubbish is on the desk, it's just basically literally the paint that came off. You know, from all these different areas. And 
you know, I can live with that. I mean, it was cheap, but given what I'm hearing from other people that this was originally over 100 US dollars, I'm a bit confused at the quality of the building that I've got. It's certainly good and strong, okay, but, you know, it, uh, I'm a bit be bewittled by, uh, I'll tell you what, let's take this off here. Let's just unscrew this. I'm just a, a bit befundled by, uh, you know, some of the differences I'm seeing here. I mean, why is this missing a certain logo? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Did they just tip X over the original uh, picture or something and decide, oh, what the hell, we'll just go with it? All right, what you've got there is the metal attachment. This was actually already pre-attached to that, so I just took the plastic bit out that was pre-attached to this bit. It doesn't really seem to make much difference which one you have in. I'm just basically going to uh, stick with that. But the big, the biggest problem is that there's literally no instructions. Nothing on the box at all. Nothing inside the box. I'm literally going to have to go hunting for proper instructions uh, online. Um, not that we haven't all done that at some point, but yeah. Well, I'll end this part of the review uh, for now, and I'll come back with more in-depth analysis of this product uh, once I've done that. Yeah. I'm actually reviewing things in more detail, aren't I? Or at least I'm trying to. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to give you a brief second or two to take a look at what you can see in front of you and just see if you can gather the same conclusion I have. Can you see it yet? It's rather specific. It's kind of looking you in the eye, so to speak. Yeah, that's right. For some reason, the screw on this bit isn't properly attached. I don't know why that is, it just is. Let's just zoom in a bit more. There you go. Not exactly happy with that. It's not like I was actually going to use this for the time being because I don't have any kind of compatible microphone. I have checked the other bits and I'm happy to say it seems to be in perfectly good order. There's nothing wrong there. Maybe it's just something that happened in handling. Maybe this is just a sign of things uh, to come. Um, yeah, not exactly too happy about that. The more I play around with this, the more I find just little things wrong. Uh, this basically is embedded in the tube itself. Okay, that's something I did notice earlier. In fact, I think the website actually tells you that as well. It does basically mean it's nicely secure from any potential danger. You do have a little bit of give, so you do have a little bit of give if you need a bit more cable this way, but not much, okay? You just kind of get the feeling that you'll end up damaging it if you do that. And that's probably best not to actually play around with that too much. Well, that's this section concluded with. Stay tuned for the next section. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's all set up. And as soon as you may know by now, I bought myself a microphone Okay, not just any, the Blue Yeti. There's a separate review for that, you'll be able to see it somewhere. I'll probably have it linked below uh, for you. But, I've got to say, in general, I'm quite liking this. Okay, now that it's all set up and in a position that I like it to be, I generally have this for the most part like this, where it's just slightly out of the way. The keyboard and mouse and everything, I move around as I need it. But generally, if I'm doing something along the lines of commentary, on what I'm looking at on screen, then I'll have it about here, and it picks up everything I'm saying quite nicely on all the settings that I've got it on. Uh, but that's just the microphone. As far as the microphone stand itself, which is what I'm really here to talk about, uh, I've got it pretty much locked up in position. One thing I really like is that the stand section here basically keeps everything... Oops. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to follow that uh, properly. But it does actually keep that in whatever position you've left it in. So if you have it like that, then it's left like that. 
Okay, if you've got it like so, then it stays like so. And presumably if you've got it upside down like that, which is one position I've not had it. Oh, for that kind of reason. Hope that's okay. Ought to be. I've still got the receipt, so I could always take it back and clean what's damaged. <clears throat> Yeah, but whatever position you've got that in, it stays in, and overall, I think it does the job quite nicely. The only thing I am concerned is that in some cases the paint job does seem to be uh, coming off in places, and I'm not exactly in love with the stand unit in here. I'll just have to slide it off a bit, and I'll see why. Oops. Yeah, that's never a good sign. That's never a good sign when it just comes off like that. Right, you can see all the paint and everything, everything's been chipped off and so on. Uh, just wait for the camera to focus properly. Yeah, and it's pretty much the same story all, all around really. And worst of all, it's actually... Hmm, I can't really get the angle properly, but there we are. This is actually incredibly difficult to do with one arm on the camera and one arm to control the stand. But uh, yeah, you can probably just about see. The stuff is a bit cracked up there. Still perfectly usable, but just a bit on the annoying side. So, I could possibly do with a bit of a redesign. And of course the fact that this was not, by any stretch of the imag imagination, the piece that it was supposed to be, according to the instructions. Uh, that's a bit worrying. The other thing that I find just a bit on the annoying side is that this still comes loose a bit. It's not going to go anywhere anytime soon, but it's just not doing quite what it's supposed to. But in general, for what it is, obviously I can't use this particular cable with this particular microphone, but so what? In general, for what it is, it works quite nicely. Okay. It's relatively cheap at the moment. Some reviews I've came across have said it costs over 150 US dollars, which does seem a bit uh, a bit bizarre in some regards, given that I got it for about 10 pounds. Uh, and the rate of exchange is not that great. Uh, but overall, yeah, I am quite nicely loving how well this works in general, apart from one or two little flaws. And of course, I love the microphone as well. They work together quite nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna call it a day. I shall see you when I see you.